Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the grace that you give to us in the love that you provide for us. I pray that we will um, thank you and glorify you for the love that you've bestowed upon us, that we'll see the significance of the way that you love us, and that we'll love others uh, following the pattern of the love that you first gave to us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So one of the kinds of interesting things about life in the world today is that, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like life is way more fragile uh, than it was just a few years ago. Um, and maybe not life in general, but like everything seems to be more disposable and it breaks down so much quicker today. When my parents moved into the house that I grew up in, in Binghamton, New York, we moved in when I was five and we had the same home phone when I graduated from high school. So we had the same kitchen phone uh, that I had when I was five up until, you know, I left home when I was, when I went to college. So all those years later, same exact phone hanging up in the kitchen. Uh, but then my cell phone, um, I don't know about any of you guys, but uh, I've had at least five smartphones <laughs> since the smartphones have come out. And that's like, uh, I think, you know, less than 10 years ago since they've started having those, you, you got to get a new phone like every other year. If you hold on to it longer than that, your phone will send you notifications that it won't update anymore and you need to get a new one. And so while before a phone could last you for like 20 years, you could pass it down to your grandchildren probably. Now our cell phones like, man, if it lasts two years, we're doing great. Uh, and then, and then when we moved into our house, when we moved down here, uh, eight years ago, this is actually the, the eight year anniversary of our family moving down here to River Ridge. And when we moved down here, the one thing we needed to replace immediately in our house was the washer and dryer. Like they just wouldn't work. It was one of those, like the one thing I got scammed with our house was like, they were like, it, it comes with a working washer and dryer unit. And then we, we get in and try to use it and it, it did not work. And so the first thing we replaced was our washer and our dryer. And I'm like, oh, great. We're replacing the washer and dryer. So those will last a long time. And then something happened with our dryer a few months ago. And they got these websites that tell you whether or not it's worth repairing your appliance. So it's like based on the lifespan of your appliance, this is whether or not it's worth to repair it or not. So I look up our dryer to see what the lifespan is and see if we should bother replacing it. And our dryer for a family of six, average lifespan, eight years. They're made to last eight years. And so like it says right on there, you know, if this starts to break down in eight years, get a new one because it's made for everything will keep breaking down at that point. And so you're better off saving your money, getting a new one. So, uh, so yeah, so we just were stuck getting a new dryer after only eight years. I could not believe it. Um, but maybe some of this is because of my own self, uh, personally, uh, with, with dealing with my body. Uh, I felt like in some ways growing up that I was kind of like Mr. Indestructible as a kid. And in my twenties, I never remember getting sick. Uh, I, I didn't have any injuries, uh, never had a surgery, never broke a bone. Like I was like, I am like, you know, put me in that uh, unbreakable movie with Bruce Willis. Like, like, like I am great. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years ago, I get tendonitis in my left shoulder. And then a few months later, I get a stress fracture in my right foot. And then as soon as I'm done healing with the stress fracture in my left foot, right foot, um, one week later, once I'm cleared to do all regular activities, I then step wrong and break my left ankle. So I go from breaking the right foot to breaking the left ankle. And I had the, the earlier tendonitis in my left shoulder. And then um, earlier this year, I started to develop calcific tendonitis in my right shoulder. So over the last couple of years, I have had breaks in both of my feet tendonitis in both of my shoulders and I feel like I am breaking down like far too fast like like my my 40 year old body is just like I'm not gonna make it to 80 it's just letting me know right now but you know but 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 as, as some of you know I'll probably make it to 80 because by the time I'm 80 I'll probably have fake knees and fake hips and fake shoulders and that's that's how I'll make it through and of course those will all end up breaking down as well uh, because life is so fragile. And one of the interesting things this week, uh, looking through things that God is 
thanked for in the Bible. Things that people come before God and say, God, I'm going to give you thanks for this. And what God is thanked for the most in the Bible. In the New Testament, uh, Matthew through Revelation, in those books of the Bible, the things that God is thanked for the most are people, those in the church, so we thank God for each other, and for food. We are thankful for our food. So in some ways, Thanksgiving is like one of the most biblical of holidays because again and again in Scripture, we're taught to thank God for our food, which is what we do on Thanksgiving Day. But in the Old Testament, uh, that's the oldest books in the Bible, what God is thanked for the most is his love. His love is what he is easily thanked for more than anything else. But the way it's worded is kind of interesting. Uh, The first of the verses in the Old Testament where God's thanked for his love is there on the screen, 1 Chronicles uh, 1641. Um, And the first two guys, the guys that are listed, Himen and Jeduthun, uh, they're just singers who are supposed to lead people in singing songs of praise to God. But it says, with them were Himen and Jeduthun and the rest who were chosen, who were designated by name, to give thanks to the Lord. So they're saying these guys were given a job, and their job was to praise God and lead people in the praise to God. And what were they supposed to praise God for? They were supposed to thank the Lord because his loving kindness is everlasting. So you had these guys, and their whole job, their career was to lead people in thanking God that his loving kindness is everlasting, which is one of the reasons why, again and again in the Bible, in the Old Testament, God is thanked for his loving kindness, because you had these guys who their job was to be like, everybody's got to thank God for his loving kindness. So everybody was thanking God for his love all the time. But the interesting thing about the word loving kindness is that one uh, that's up on the screen, uh, it's it's a made-up word in English. There's no English word loving kindness. Uh, They took two words, loving, kindness, smashed them together. It's not a a real English word. Um, But the reason that they did that and took two words and smashed them together is that the Hebrew word behind this word for love uh, is a word that we don't have an equivalent for in English. So we don't have an English word for love that communicates exactly what that word communicates. So they made up a word just to be like, this isn't something you find in English. And this kind of love is a different kind of love because this is a love that we would call a covenant love or a promise love. And what I mean by covenant love or promise love is that uh, typically in everyday life, when we love someone else, we love them for some specific reason about them. Like, I love my children because they're my children. And and I got to love them whether they're being annoying or being wonderful. I love them because they're my children. If we love other people, we usually love them for something about them. They're beautiful. They're kind. They're compassionate. Oh, they make me laugh. Or they got money. And, you know, they, they can help me out with their money. And then that's why I love them. And so we have all of these reasons that we love other people. Some of them are good. Like, it's, it's, it's wonderful to love someone because you enjoy spending time with them, and you like their company, and you like their personality, and so you love them for who you are. Some of them are vain, like, I love him because he's got money for me, or I love her because of the curves that she has. Like, some of them are, are pretty vain and low, but, but we all have these external reasons that we love each other. Well, this specific word for love, for God's love, is, is different, and, and it's sort of explained as you walk all the way through the Old Testament and see all of its uses. Um, but this word love means I'm going to love you because I'm promising to love you. It's not because you're pretty. It's not because you give me money. It's not because you spend time with me. I'm going to love you simply because I'm saying I love you, and I'm going to promise to love you, and I will love you no matter what. So if I love you when you're, you know, skinny and 100 pounds, I'm going to love you, you know, 30 years down the road when I don't even remember what you looked like back then because it looks so different. I will continue. I will continue to love you. And, and even if you abandon me, if, if I loved you because you were faithful for me, then at one point you abandon me and go off to someone else, I will continue to love you even if you don't return that love to me. So, so it's, it's a word that means I will, I will love you no matter what, because I am saying I'm promising 
to love you. It's nothing about you, but it's me making that commitment to love you. And what's interesting is that all of the times where it's talked about thanking God for his loving kindness, and it comes up again and again and again, and I'm going to read through them all in just a moment. Um, but it says, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Everlasting. So it's not just that God's saying, I'm loving you, not out of any worth that you bring to me, but I'm just simply loving you because I'm, I'm gracious and I'm merciful. And even though you don't deserve it, I'm going to love you. But the emphasis for why we thank God for his loving kindness is that it is everlasting. That no matter what comes up in my life, no matter how much I, I stumble and fail God, or, or even no matter how faithful I am in what I do, uh, it doesn't make God love me more if I'm being gracious and kind and compassionate to other people. It doesn't make God love me less if I am a selfish jerk and I don't treat other people right. That God is going to continue to love me no matter what because his love is everlasting. And that's, that's the key point that they want to emphasize. Because all of us make commitments to love people all the time that we then break, that we fall apart on. Because we're just like, I cannot love you anymore because it's damaging and harming to me. Uh, I can't love you anymore because I now love this other person more. God never has that because he is capable of having complete love for everyone. So he doesn't need to stop loving you because he loves someone else. He has the only eternal love that can love all. And also, God does not ever need to worry about our sins harming or damaging him. Like, we need to worry about the sins of other people harming us. And am I right? We've all been harmed by the behaviors of others. We can't harm God with our behaviors. So he can continue to love us no matter how we are before him. And so we see this repeated again and again. Psalm 107.1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And then the, the next line is explaining why is God good? God is good because his loving kindness is everlasting. And then this is basically the same in Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And then it goes through a whole psalm of thanking and praising God. And then the last verse of that same psalm repeats that line again. In case you forgot, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Why is he good? His loving kindness is everlasting. Psalm 136, 1 through 3 really drive this home. Uh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And then you go down to verse 26. Give thanks to the God of heaven for his loving kindness is everlasting. And then the prophet of Jeremiah uh, gets in on the praising God for his loving kindness. In Jeremiah 33, 11, he says, The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who say, Give thanks to the Lord of hosts, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. So we thank the Lord that his goodness is eternal and everlasting. And God wants to give his love to every single one of us. Uh, but the key to God's love is not only that his love is eternal, but like I said, this is, this is a promised love. This is a covenant love. And so that means that God's love is available for all of us. But you need to enter into the promise in order to experience it and receive it. You need to enter into the covenant in order to receive it and experience it. And then once you receive that love, what happens to that love once you get it? It's everlasting. It's eternal. It never goes away based on what you do. But you first need to enter into that love in order to experience it. And the New Testament repeats uh, probably about 140 times how to enter into the love of God. And we enter into it through belief or through faith in Jesus Christ. And just to bring it up in the, uh, the most famous verse in the Bible that talks about it, you probably all heard it before, but to, to bring it up again, because that verse is all about God's loving kindness being everlasting. And that's John 3, 16. For God so loved for God so loved the world. So what are, what are we initially talking about? His loving kindness. God, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So in his love, 
He sends Jesus. So the rest of the verse, though, is about how we receive what Jesus has brought. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him. So it's whoever wants to can be a part, but how do you be a part? you got to believe in Jesus. And believing in Jesus is, is real simple because it's really simple to believe something. Now, to act on it afterwards is a little bit more difficult, uh, but to believe on it is as easy as it could be because Jesus did all the work, so all he left up for us to do is to believe. Jesus lived the perfect life that we can't live. Jesus died on the cross to cleanse and cover our sins. Jesus rose from the dead so that he could give us his eternal life. And Jesus sends the Holy Spirit so we can be born again. Jesus does it all. But Jesus is not going to force it upon us. Jesus doesn't go up to people and say, you know, whether you like it or not, I'm going to cleanse your sins and I'm going to forgive them and wash it away. Jesus doesn't go to people and say, whether you want to or not, I'm going to raise you to eternal life and you're going to be living with me in forever in heaven, even if you don't want to be near me. Jesus doesn't do that. He doesn't force himself upon anyone. But he wants to make it as easy as possible for people to enter his love. So Jesus says, if you want to enter his love, you need to believe in him. You need to believe that he's the one who died on the cross to cover your sins. You need to believe that he rose from the dead to give you eternal life. And if you'll believe, I think trust is another good word for it. If you trust that Jesus will cover your sins, if you trust that Jesus will give you eternal life, he'll give it. And the thing about John 3.16 is that it really doubles down on this idea of everlasting. Then there's two consequences for the person who believes in God. If you believe in God, two consequences will come upon you. You'll never perish, and you'll have eternal life. You won't have the negative of dying, because you'll never perish, and then you'll have the positive of living forever. But that doesn't change God's loving kindness. That's the key to the gospel, is that it is not about our love for God, it's about God's love for us. And what is God's love for us like? It is everlasting love. It is eternal love. That's why when Jesus comes and brings his life to us, it will be eternal life. So what I'm going to be thinking about when I thank God this Thanksgiving, what's going to be on my heart in all my thanksgivings this year, this will be my, my, my driving theme for the next week. This is what I'm going to praise God before I sit down and eat way too much turkey and stuffing and green bean casserole and whatever other amazing things my wife makes, sweet potato casserole. Um, as I'm devouring all, those food, all that food, I'm going to be thanking God that his love is everlasting, that his love is eternal, that I am God's child forever, not because I'm a good person, I'm not a good person. Um, not because I'm better than anybody else, because I don't think I'm better than anybody else. Um, I, I stumble and I mess up all the time, and I'm, I'm a jerk a lot, and um, I'm selfish, and I'm lazy, um, and, you know, like, uh, like uh, I, I curse sometimes. Um, my, kid, my kids are always blown away by that uh, when those moments come up. Uh, like uh, this, this past summer, um, I'm, my daughter Naomi and I were on, were on a jet ski and we're riding on a lake on a jet ski and she's sitting in the front driving the thing and I'm holding on to her on the back and she hits this wave and uh, I thought I was going to fall off the back when she hit it. And so I swear and she's like, can I, can I tell everybody what you said on the jet ski? And I'm like, no. Um, so like, like, but, but that's just a dumb thing. But, but I do things all the, wrong all the time. You do things all wrong all the time. But that doesn't stop God loving us because God's love is everlasting. It's eternal. So what I want all of you to do this morning, what I, what I would love, love, is for all of you to know that God loves you forever. Um, that he loves you for all of eternity. Um, and, and God has that love available for you. He just says, I'm not going to force it on you. You just got to believe in Jesus. You just got to receive his son. And I, I, I'm fully confident that if you receive Jesus and believe in him today, if you've never done it before, you will have the greatest reason to thank God over the next week. 
and you'll have the most joyous Thanksgiving that you've ever had. And so, uh, so I want to encourage you to believe in Jesus this morning. And if you're somebody who you, you're like, Sean, I've been believing in Jesus since before you were born. Like you're talking about your body breaking down when you're 40. My body has been breaking down for 40 years already. Um, I've been believing in Jesus for a long time. Um, I want to encourage you over the next week um, to spend your time thanking God for his everlasting love um, and that it won't leave you and that won't forsake you. So just two encouragements this morning. Uh, One, if you've never believed in Jesus, you can do it right now. Um, As I pray publicly and out loud, you can pray privately in your heart and your mind. God will hear, he'll know. And if you just come before God and say, I believe in your son, I believe in his death, I believe in his resurrection, you'll have that eternal life forever. And if you want to talk to me more about that when we're done, uh, feel free to. Like I said, we're going to get this food out fast. Just wait a couple of minutes and I'd love to talk to you about it more. You can come back to church tomorrow. Uh, We're talking uh, more about Christ in the Gospel of John. And I'd love to have you here at 10 o'clock when we have that to to talk about that more. Um, So if you haven't believed in Jesus, you can do it right now. There's nothing standing between you and the Gospel. Um, But if you already are a believer in Jesus, I would really love you to spend this next week thanking God for his eternal love. All right, let's pray and uh, give out some chickens. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in this day. And the reason we're rejoicing and the reason we're glad is because your loving kindness is everlasting. Your love is eternal. Your salvation is eternal. And I pray that every person in this room will know Jesus Christ. I pray that every person in here will believe that Jesus died on their sin, for their sins, rose from the dead, and offers them eternal life. And I pray that there will not be a man or woman this morning who walks away from this building and does not believe in that. And I pray if anyone in here uh, needs encouragement, that they don't have a church, uh, I pray that they'll find that encouragement in uh, the body of Christ that's here at Grace Community Bible Church and that we can encourage them and bless them. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray.